Hello and welcome to In the Wall with me, Parker Kligerman. This is the show where the U.S. motorsport world comes together to discuss all motorsports. Want to be a part of this show? Send us your thoughts, questions, comments using the hashtag In the Wall. You might just be on here. This week, though, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to attempt to answer a simple question. What makes good racing? Joining us to do this will be Cup Series winner Chase Briscoe. But first, we start with the news from around the world. In NASCAR, as many of you, as many of you know, this weekend, the Bristol Dirt Race will be on Easter Sunday, which will be the first NASCAR Cup race on Easter since 1989. The track and Fox have planned special Easter ceremonies before the broadcast and on the grounds for the race fans. And I hope this is a big success because I want to see families around the country getting excited about watching some exciting racing after Easter dinner. I know I will be, and I look forward to that. Uh, for Talladega, RCR announced that Jeffrey Earnhardt will race a black number three at the upcoming Xfinity race at Talladega. That is slick looking. Love that. Best of luck to them. Very cool. Also, I will be racing at the dirt race in the truck series this coming weekend. And I'll have the cleanest truck there because bounty. How cool is that? It's beautiful. It's amazing. We're going to bring that to the dirt race. It's going to get covered in dirt. And then we're going to clean it all up with bounty paper towels. You see our normal scheme back there. We've really outdone ourselves with this one. Thank you, J.D. Laird, for that awesome scheme. In F1, Lewis Hamilton has said even though the FIA has reminded drivers there's a ban on wearing certain jewelry while in the car, he will not be removing some of his earrings because they're, like, welded in. Um, that's kind of crazy. I also agree with him. I think there's bigger issues in motorsports than if the drivers are wearing some jewelry. Actually, myself, I wore this necklace almost in every race in the past 10 years, uh, up until like maybe the last few, because it was getting caught a little bit under my hand sometimes and annoying me, but I don't think that's a big problem. I don't think we should worry about it. Let the drivers wear their uh, jewelry. Let Lewis express himself. This past weekend, though, a big topic has been fighting in motorsports, right? We, we saw the big fight between Sam Mayer and Ty Gibbs, and this became all the rage all week. Well, in Formula E, they did something really unique this past weekend. They did what they call a driver's room, where after the race, they took all the drivers and immediately put them in a room where they had to watch moments from the race and react. Take a look at this. Who won? Mitch. Hi, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, my God. You're okay. Oh, nah. Mitch, man. Both of them. How fast was it? Like, he was fast. I mean, yeah, we had the pace. We had the pace here. I wonder what that would look like in NASCAR. Let me know if you like that, because it's pretty interesting what they're doing there in Formula E. All right, we've got a guest. He has won a cup race this year in the next-gen car, and he's going to help us answer the question, what makes good racing? None other than Chase Briscoe here, driver of the number 14 car in the NASCAR Cup Series. So, Chase, on a lot of shows, they're going to ask you about results and that sort of thing. We don't want that. We want your opinion <laughs> of how to make what makes good racing, starting with this past weekend at Martinsville, where it looked very hard to pass. Why was that? Yeah, it was definitely hard to pass. And, and then going back to your first question, you know, what makes good racing? I think it's, you know, dependent on the racetrack, right? You know, all the racetracks are different. The package that works at some racetracks doesn't work at others. And at Martinsville, I think it was just a combination of, we probably had less power than we've ever ran on a short track. I uh, had quite a bit more downforce and then the tire was just extremely good and we didn't really ever fall off. I mean, I felt like we were running almost the same lap times uh, from lap one to lap you know, 80 of a run. So you put all those variables together. All of us were relatively the same speed uh, for most of the run and, you know, the car just drove really, really good. So, and then you had the, the downforce part into it. We were definitely getting, uh, aero tight more on the short tracks, you know, this past weekend at Martinsville than even the week before at Richmond than I did any of the mile and a half stuff. So it's definitely been uh, interesting. I, I don't know necessarily what the fix is, uh, but I do think on the short tracks, maybe adding power or, you know, even getting a, a, a tire that falls off a little bit more might not be a bad idea. I love adding power, as you know, both of us being racers. We want that horsepower, man, right? I love yeah, it. for Just sure. Give, give us the power, come on. Uh, going down that path a little bit, you talk about the tire. That's my question because I feel like that can kind of be a fix all at times, just having a tire that falls off. If you, do you feel like in your career in the past you've seen where just having a tire that falls off can create that racing that people are looking for? Yeah, I think for sure. You know, some racetracks, it works better than others, but I, I do feel like you definitely see more comers and goers. You see, you know, that kind of that mix of short-run cars and, and long-run cars and 
that typically provides a pretty good product on the racetrack. As far as the watch, it, it adds a, a definitely a different element from a strategy standpoint. So I do think that that puts a certain complexion in the race whenever you do have, you know, a, a ton of tire fall off. So, yeah, you know, the hard thing is, is, you know, trying to, to manage that, right. And trying to get it right. And how much is too much fall off, how much is not enough. Um, and still having a tire that can last, you know, on a long run, uh, without blowing tires, that's obviously something that we don't want. So it's a hard balance for sure. I don't, I don't know what the, the fix all is, uh, when it comes to short track stuff, but I do think, you know, the, the more power deal would be something that would definitely help, but that's obviously a hard thing to sell to the engine builders and everything else. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what we do um, because obviously we don't want to do what we did last week at Barnesville at every short track just because you know the short tracks have kind of been our bread and butter the last couple of years as being a really good product and we don't want to lose that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. It, there's a good thing we're not tire engineers or motor guys, <laughs> yeah. right? But behind you, one thing you are good at, that is winning. You have won a lot of different types of race cars. You've driven a lot of different types of race cars. You have all those trophies back there to prove it. I'm curious, when you look at driving dirt sprint cars or stock cars, or you've even driven sports cars in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Series, when you've been a part of good racing, where you're in the car and you're thinking, this has to be good racing. This is a good show. I know it. What are some consistent themes amongst all those that when you're in there, you're thinking or seeing that's telling you this is good racing? Yeah, I think for me, the, the big thing is is having a racetrack that has multiple grooves. You know, you go to a racetrack that's that's one groove. Not saying you can't still have a good finish, you know, at racetracks with one grooves, but just a start to finish good race, to me at least, is a racetrack that has multiple grooves where you can move around the racetrack. There's guys running all over the place, different lanes. You know, some guys' cars work on the bottom. Other guys work on the fence. You know, to me, that's what puts on a good race is when you have guys that are moving around, searching for grip. Uh, slip and sliding around, you know, to me, at least from my eye, you know, everybody's eyes are perspective. Everybody's perspective is different in their eyes of what puts on a good race. Some people want to see, you know, crashes. Some people want to see side by side racing. Some people just want to see a close finish. And, you know, the racetrack, I feel like is a huge factor of of kind of what you get. So for me, you know, when I, when I go to watch a race or want to see a good race, or even from my perspective, when I feel like we're putting on a good race is typically at places that I uh, have multiple grooves. You can really move around. You know, the drivers, I feel like, come more into play because they're searching for grip and can can kind of manipulate the car and make it do certain things that might not want to do just by changing their line. And to me, that always puts on a really good race. Right. Yeah. It's uh, us drivers. We like to move around. We like to have it in our control, right? So put on your fan cap yeah. for a second because you kind of went into there. I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you think of the best race you ever saw as a fan? You thought from start to finish, you were watching this race and you're thinking the whole time, this is unbelievable the racing is amazing and it culminated with a great finish can you think of one off the top of your head oh man off the top of my head i've seen a lot of really good races i'm trying to think of one that just stands out you know there's definitely been some incredible dirt races over the past couple of years it's hard for me to honestly point out this one race where i was like man that race from start to finish was was you know phenomenal but there's definitely been some dirt races over the past couple of years that i've watched and just blown away you know guys throwing sliders and and honestly, the last two weeks at Millbridge at the local the local <laughs> mini sprint track here, last week's race for eight, nine laps, they they threw slide jobs every corner, every lap. And then I was just watching a highlight reel from last night's race uh, with the little kids and Brexton Bush and this other kid, I mean, literally ran an inch from each other for 15 laps. And I was blown away at how good the race was between these two kids and the respect they showed. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of good racing you know, all over the place. You know, I think we've definitely had some good races uh, you know, this, this year, even in the cup series, you know, the Richmond Xfinity race coming down to the wire was good. You know, the, what you call a good race, it, it's also different. Like I was saying earlier, you know, it's, uh, it's a close finish, a good race, or is the race all the way throughout, you know, good, even though it doesn't have a good finish, you know? So for me, I just enjoy watching guys run really close side by side and race with respect. And there's been a lot of that. I feel like kind of all over the place. So it's been uh, a good year to be a race fan. And that is the question we are trying to answer. What is what makes a good race? Uh, I got one more thing for you. I'm going to race dirt in the trucks this pet this coming weekend. You helped me a little bit last year. I've been looking again. I'm about help. <laughs> well, you did a little bit. You and I were we were pretty close, and you gave me some good tips. But I'm <clears> thinking <throat> I need more dirt experience. You have a dirt car, a USAC midget. When can I come drive it? I've told you uh, for a long time. Anytime you want to come do it, we're making it happen. And 
I, I don't know if you want to race or if you just want to test. I want to race. I've always wanted to get, I've always wanted to get you in it. We obviously ha- have a cool connection. So it would be cool to, uh, to make it all happen. And I've always told you, I think you'd be really good on the dirt. You always done a really good job in the truck stuff. So might have to get, uh, get you in the midget here soon. This has gone entirely different than most of our interviews. Normally they tell me no, and that I'm the worst and I can't do it. So you know what, normally I kick them off, but I'm going to keep you on if you want to stay, but we actually have to <laughs> let you go. So thanks for coming on, bud. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me. See you later. All right. Next, we're going to jump into something brand new here on In the Wall, a Tech Minute with Bozy. Welcome to the Racing Tech Minute. My name is Bozy, and today we'll be digging into the NASCAR Cup Series race at Martinsville. The race seemed pretty tame by short track standards, and that happened for a variety of reasons. The primary culprit seems to be ambient temperatures, which hovered around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What this results in is tires that don't wear and tires that don't lay down rubber on the track. In that case, the track doesn't reward drivers for trying to pick, a, pick another lane, so they end up in a single file line. That compounds with some of the design elements of the NASCAR Next Gen car, like the engine air intake being located at the front of the car versus the cowl in the previous generation. And in that case, with cars back to back, there can be difficulty passing if they try to get close to one another. In addition to that, this is the first race for the NASCAR Next Gen car at Martinsville. Even though it has been tested on a short track, you don't see how cars react until you have a full field of them on track. So I believe that the series will likely look at gear ratios and maybe uh, engine tunes and things like that. But the ultimate fix here will probably be in the tires and NASCAR will probably go back to Goodyear and maybe try to reduce some of the grip on the left sides or do something else to maybe make them wear a little more in case temperatures go down again. Thanks, Bozy. That was awesome. Uh, And continuing on this theme of what makes good racing, earlier today, I sent out a tweet with our question, what makes good racing? And we were overrun with an answer from my mom. I'm just kidding. There was a lot of you that sent in all sorts of different answers. But all of you had a similar theme. You want to see passing. Makes sense. You want to see cars going by each other. And if we look at what was racing this weekend, there was a lot of chances to compare notes amongst all the racing series. We had MotoGP racing, Formula 1, all three NASCAR series, Formula E, World Superbike, IndyCar, and IMSA. Needless to say, there was a lot of racing, and yet across all that amazing motorsport action, the two series who had the biggest issue with bad shows happened to be the biggest motorsport series in the world. F1 and NASCAR both suffered races that seemed less than great and both struggled having cars pass each other. Hmm. Even though both unveiled new cars this year that were supposed to make the racing better, and we have seen that be the case at certain tracks, but this week both were hampered by something that seems to potentially be the most important factor in any race. Some would say it's where the rubber meets the road tires. These two massive series both had tire situations that led to very little wear on the tires. In F1's case, this was because of a repaved track surface with a dominant tire compound that was the best. And in NASCAR, the issue was simply cold temperatures. Tire wouldn't wear onto the track. So if the most important factor in creating a good race in most racing series is in the hands of a third party, is the next step in one of these series' future to take control of this and make their own tires. That might be crazy, but who knows? I don't know. I'm just saying we're doing a lot to make better racing. What if we just took the tires over completely? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments. If you disagree, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. All I know is, and then there's this. So I mentioned that a lot of you wrote in to my tweet uh, about what makes good racing. So instead of normally putting just a couple up here, I'm just going to read some off my phone real quick. Unpredictability, varying strategies, and a tiny bit of drama. Um, Any race that a car with my logo wins. (laughs) Haha, funny. Um, Let's see what they are passing and be able to reel the car in front of you. Brian Till, our very own Brian Till, said respect. Um, Some said speed difference from tire fall off. Hmm, Sounds familiar. One person said, comers and goers. 
We want guys who have short run speed versus long run speed and being able to pass. Once again, passing. Um, let's see here. Passing, passing. One person said, when I'm in the race. That's very nice of them. Thank you. Um, let's see. Tire wear. You get the point. The, at the end of the day, people want passing. They want to see tires that fall off. Have tire wear, which makes more passing. I think that's what makes a good race. You just want passing. As always, this is the show about you. Please send in all of your questions. Use the hashtag in the wall or hit me directly on Twitter or Instagram, at P. Kligman. Be a part of the show. Ask us questions. Send me your own rants. Get involved. And remember, subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel and check out NBCSports.com for more motorsports content. Thanks for watching. I'm going dirt